So many have requested I design a phone purse with a pocket for money. This is a great little bag to take on errands or to places you don't wish to carry a large bag. Its use of drop stitches creates a beautiful weaved appearance, adding interest while eliminating the need to line it. It's really easy to make, so stay tuned! For a full list of supplies, please see the description box below. To begin, you need to make a chain in multiples of two that is one inch longer than your cell phone or the desired object you plan to carry. For me, that was four inches or 14 stitches. Now you will turn and place a single crochet in the second chain from your hook and in each chain stitch to the end. Once you get to the end, you're going to turn and work up the other side of your chain. There should be two stitches sharing each chain stitch. You're going to continue placing single crochet in each stitch all the way till you reach the beginning. Now you're going to place one extra single crochet in that last stitch. Chain two, skip the first single crochet of round one and place a single crochet in the second stitch. Now you will chain one and skip one. Place a single crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next stitch. Repeat this process all the way around until you reach the chain two space you began with. When you reach the chain two space, we are going to begin working in continuous rounds, so you need to grab a stitch marker. We are going to be placing our first stitch in the single crochet that we skipped at the very beginning. So you're gonna skip the last single crochet and go into the single crochet that is two rounds below underneath the chain two space. That's our first stitch, so place your stitch marker in it. Now you will chain one and skip one. The next stitch is a chain one space. We are going to place a dropped single crochet in the stitch below that chain one space, two rounds below. You will chain one and skip one. Go to the next chain one space. Place a dropped single crochet in the single crochet, two rounds below. Chain one, skip one. Repeat this process. Placing a dropped single crochet below the chain one space, chaining one and skipping one. You're going to repeat this process all the way around until you reach your stitch marker. Once you reach your stitch marker, you will be sure to place your drop single crochet in the very last stitch. It is easy to overlook it. Now, we will start the next round. Technically, we will be skipping our first stitch of the last round and placing a drop stitch single crochet just below that chain one space. This becomes our first stitch of the next round. 
so you need to move your stitch marker. You will see that it shifts to the left every round. Now we're going to continue in that same fashion, chaining one, skipping one, and placing your dropped single crochet in the single crochet below the chain one space. Chain one, skip one, place a dropped sit single crochet below the chain one space. Continue this all the way around until you reach your stitch marker. When you reach your stitch marker, be sure you place your last drop stitch single crochet chain one, then the stitch you skip is actually the first stitch of the last round. Now that became the first stitch of the next round. As you see, it moved to the left. Continue placing drop stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip one, Place a dropped stitch single crochet below the chain one space from the round below. As you continue to work rounds, it will be much easier to see these stitches. As you can see, it creates a nice weaved look with alternating stitches. Just continue in this fashion until it measures approximately six and a half inches for me, or about 16 centimeters. Just continue in this fashion, and when you reach that measurement, we will add our wooden rings, and then continue on for the last portion. So here I am showing you one more round before I add my wooden rings. As you can see, it's a lot easier to see the stitches where you placed your drop stitch single crochet. Now we will add our wooden rings on each side. So you will continue in the stitch pattern until you reach the side. When you reach the place where you want to add your wooden ring, you will do a drop stitch single crochet, but you will omit the chain one space for now. So take your wooden ring and place it between your hook and your working yarn. Slide your hook through the ring and make a slip stitch. That is it. Now you continue in the stitch pattern, which means chaining one and skipping one. So just continue until you reach the other side where you would like to place your wooden ring. Here we are at the other side. Do a drop stitch single crochet and not the chain one. Grab your ring and slip stitch through the ring. Now continue in the stitch pattern by chaining one and skipping one. You're going to finish the round as usual.
As you can see, since we are working in continuous rounds, it is slightly off. The wooden rings will not be the exact same level, but they'll be close, so it's good enough. So now you're going to continue the stitch pattern for four more rounds to add about one inch towards the top. That's just so you actually have something to put the drawstring in. I'm going to show you how to place your stitches around the wooden ring. It is sort of tricky. You have to be very careful right here. Make sure you pay close attention to where you place your drop stitch single crochet. So as you can see, the drop stitch single crochet is actually underneath the wooden ring. Pay very close attention. I'm going slow on purpose. Even I have trouble here. When you are done with each round, especially after the wooden rings, I highly recommend that you count your stitches to make sure that you didn't accidentally decrease or increase. I've made several of these and I still find myself accidentally decreasing. If your stitch count is the same as mine, you should have 14 drop stitch single crochet. Continue in the stitch pattern for three more rounds. When you are finished, it should measure approximately 8 inches in length or 20 centimeters in length. Fasten off and instead of slip stitching like usual, try to do an invisible join. As you can see, it brings the knot towards the back. Now we will add our drawstring. I have gone down to a smaller hook size, 3.75 size F hook, and I'm going to make a tight chain until it measures 14 inches. Fasten off, leaving a bit of a tail. Now we're going to use a yarn needle and thread it through the sling. Just kind of eyeball it. You want it to be about the level of the row above the wooden rings and centered. Going in and out of one drop stitch single crochet and then I'm skipping over about two. This will be a challenge since it's worked in continuous rounds. It will not be exact, but you can get it pretty close. So now I'm skipping over two more, and then I'm going to skip over four. And again, skip over two. And skip over two. You may have to slightly alter which holes you come out of so that it will be equal. So it's just slightly off. But that's okay. Now we're going to add a bead to make this a functioning drawstring. I'm going to be using approximately a 15 to 20 millimeter bead. The main object is so that the bead will fit over both strands of the chain and be tight enough to work as a drawstring. To me this is perfect. And to keep this bead from falling off I'm going to add two smaller beads to the bottom of each tail. Now you could stop here and just knot off the ends after adding these beads. But I'm going to add tassels to mine as well and show you how I do that.
So I just wrap my fingers. It's about four inches if you wanted to wrap a piece of cardboard. I only wrapped it about seven times. You don't want this to be super thick. And then I'm going to cut a piece of yarn that's probably about six inches long, one for each strand. I'm going to loop this through the bottom chain. Now take your tassel tails and slide it in between that piece of yarn and simply tie it off. You're going to want to tie it in a knot since it will probably get a lot of wear and tear. Now since these tails are going every which way, I'm going to add another piece of yarn at the top to hold it together. I did not measure this piece of yarn. So I tie it once in the front, then I flip it over and tie it in a knot in the back. Now take your yarn needle and tuck those tails inside so they don't come out. This just makes it look nicer. Now take your scissors and cut the tails even and repeat to the other side. Now it's time to add the pocket to the back. This is one I've already done. Cut out a piece of graph paper that's about four inches long and three inches wide. We're gonna use it to trace onto vinyl. I bought this at Hobby Lobby on the roll, but you can buy it in any cry cut section, even at Walmart. So I'm just taking a pin and tracing around it. Now I'm using this rubber mat, this razor rotary cutter, and a quilting ruler so that I get super straight clean edges. This is not required, but I highly recommend it. If you want this to look like a professional project, I would definitely use these. Now I'm going to create the holes that I sew into using a perforated blade on the rotary cutter. I'm just going barely inside the outside edge, and I'm going to press extremely hard because there's no turning back. Now you repeat this process to the other two edges. You should be able to see tiny little holes on the underside. Now take an extremely sharp ribbon needle, some embroidery thread, and we're going to sew it to the back of the sling. I'm just eyeballing it here. I've got about two rows up and just a little bit on each side and line it up with the row above. Now take about two feet of embroidery thread and knot off the bottom portion. You don't wanna leave a long tail or it will show. Now here I tell you to go into the top stitch but actually i would go into the second stitch to begin your back stitch i apologize for not getting it on video you will have to play around with your needle just a little bit to find the holes they will not be visible which is a positive thing, but also makes it very difficult. Now I'm going to begin my back stitches. That is simply going backward and forward with each stitch. So now I'm going to work backwards. 
and I'm going to enter where I exited on the last stitch. And I'm going to come out forward from the last stitch. So work in this backward and forward motion. When you get to the corner, you will slightly angle your needle so that you come out in the next stitch. Now continue in your back stitch process, going backward and forward. When you get to the last stitch, instead of coming up on the top, go through the inside. Looks great. Now you will just knot off the inside and hide your tail on the inside of the sling. Now I'm going to make the strap, and mine is about 60 inches long. So you're going to chain in multiples of two until it reaches about 60 inches long, slightly stretched. Leave yourself a long tail at the beginning. Turn and skip the first chain and make a single crochet in the second chain. Chain one, skip one. Single crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next stitch. Continue in this fashion until you get all the way to the end of your chain. Chain one and turn. Now you will place a single crochet in every chain one space. We are not doing drop stitch single crochets in this particular strap. This is known as the linen stitch. Chain one, skip one, place a single crochet in the chain one space below. I'm going to continue this until you get to the end. Once you reach the end, make sure that you don't place your last single crochet in the single crochet. Make sure you go in the turning chain of the row below. Now you will fasten off, leaving yourself a length of tail for sewing purposes. You will want to stretch it slightly to give it a better shape. Thread one of the tails onto the yarn needle. Now loop your strap through the wooden ring. And we're going to sew it to secure. I'm using mostly a whip stitch here. I'm going to go through to the other side and repeat the process. Repeat this process to the other side, being careful you don't twist your strap in the process. You will also be able to knot it off like I did this one, so it's a comfortable length. Your anything sling is complete. I hope that you enjoyed making this with me today. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.